everybody, it's Linda here from Jewelry Maker. Um, let's hope this is third time lucky because I've just uh, recorded two videos completely with no sound whatsoever. So, third time lucky. Anyway, today I'm going to show you how to make this lovely pendant using um, this beautiful abalone shell. Um, bead it is really because it's drilled. Okay, now you'll get several of these on the strand. Um, and they are equally as beautiful on one side as on the other. Completely different in pattern, but let's say it's Mother Nature's little miracle. So it's completely different on both sides. Like oil on water, it's the most stunning shell. Right, um, what I did, I have done this sort of wire work. I'm not the greatest wire worker in the world, but um, this is very, very simple. And what I've done is I've looked at the abalone and it just made me think of the ocean the ocean made me think of the fish swimming around in it with the little bubbles coming up to the surface and then continuing the bubble theme um, on the one side of the neckline with a very simple chain mail and mobius rings and then the other side several lengths i've got six lengths exactly the same length of um chain um which sort of looks like the seashore the, the line of the, of the beach line and then here's the sort of sea and the little fishes and whatever's going on underneath the ocean. Right, after all that romanticism, let's get started. Right now, what you need to do is um, take one of your abalone shells. Right now, as I said before, they are drilled from um, top to bottom. Now, um, when you're putting your 0.8 wire through, you need to make sure that the wire that's passing through the shell, because it's hollow, okay, the wire that's passing through the shell has to be as straight as you can make it. Because then, when you pop it in the one end, it should just go straight through the centre and find the end of the tunnel on the other end. If it doesn't happen first time, don't worry. Just just keep on making sure that this is this is straight. You might just hit the outer edge of the shell and think it's not going to go through, but it will go through because all of these bees are have been delivered, have been delivered on a strand. So um, the holes are not blocked at all. Right now, I did my um, pendant with the pointy bit at the bottom and this more um, bulbous part at the top. So to begin with, once your wire is through, pull the shell up to about a good two and a half, two inches, about five centimetres, I suppose. Pop your round nose pliers on one of the sort of thick, using them as um, a former. You can see here that that would give me a small wrap loop. This is going to give me a bigger wrap loop. Move the shell out of the way. Right now, just there, what we're going to do now is make a wrap loop. So we're going to push that forward, give it a good push down, hold that residue, flick and turn our ply around, bring that back through 180 degrees, give that a good push down, take our pliers out, put them back where they, exactly where they fit and then twist your wire around a couple of times. We want a little bit of a neck here. So if you twist it around a couple of times like that, that's perfect. And then we're just going to trim off the excess. Okay. Now we're going to pull the wire down so that that wrap loop now is on the top of um, the shell. Okay. Sitting there uh, ready and waiting. Now, when you look at the shell, you'll see that um, the whole Either, either end actually. Normally it goes dead centre into the, the fatter part here, but it'll come out just slightly on the shell rather than through the edge here. Um, I think that must be the fact that um, possibly if it came through here on the edge, it might shatter the shell. So um, very cleverly, it comes just out on the top. So we're going to make that the back of the pendant. So what I'm going to do now is take the wire and just gently... Bring it round and pull it to the, the front. So now you've got no untidy little uh, lip of wire there. It's nice and clean. Sitting there right on um, the beginnings of where we want to start forming the little bubbles. Now to form the little bubbles, 
you take your round nose pliers and making sure that you're on the, the right side of the shell is take your pliers, I'm just going to do a little turn around now, turn my plier, turn it around, turn it around again and then seeing where that's going to sit, which is going to be about here, I will then give that a little twist down and that's the sort of beginning of the little bubble effect that's going um, up the shell. You can take your time over that, you can really sort of um, go in really with the sort of the tip of your pliers here to make these nice round co uh, coils. Next one, slightly bigger perhaps, over the top of that, move my plier around and take it back in, form my next circle and then I want my wire to come out at the top to continue the um, forming of the little bubble. So again, I'm going to push that down. So we've got some of the bubbles coming up now and it's just a matter of growing that. Now, each time you form one of these little bubbles, just take the time to push them down. Um, I would say use your flat nose pliers, but I think you might get too much of a welly in it and you could crack, because this is hollow, we don't want to compromise it. So just use your fingers. It doesn't have to be perfectly flat. Bubbles float around, don't they? So, and then you just continue this bubble effect all the way up to the top. So I'll show you on the original. See, it's just coming all the way up to the top and then it's turning around here in the wrap loop to come back down. So I'll just show you what I mean by that. So as you have formed your bubbles, keeping your wire nice and tight, okay, because you want it to sit as best as possible um, on the shell. Not completely flat, it can um, sort of differ slightly and it can go a little bit upwards or whatever. It just all depends on how you want it to be. But when you come up to the top here, by the wrapped loop, what we need to do is take our wire, okay, and just bring it around that loop, okay, and then cross it over, and then we're coming out then, if you imagine this here, over this side, is going to be all the bubbles coming up, because it's wire, you can start to move it around and push it around and form it wherever you want to, Take your round nose pliers and do exactly the same with your bubbles, making them bigger and smaller. What I did on mine is I just, I didn't come all the way down to the bottom. I brought the bubbles round to about here and then I cut my wire off at about with a centimetre of residue and just twisted, I'll show you on the original, and then just twisted. There's the end of the wire. I've just twisted it and linked it inside there. It's not going anywhere. It's perfectly secure. Um, you can do it whatever way you like. I mean, the bubbles might just want to come up around the edge and go back down the edge. It's entirely up to you. Right, then, um, when you have done that, I'll just get rid of this little bit of excess here so that we can think about the neckline. Right, let me straighten myself up a little bit. Um, right, the neckline as you can see here, consists of, let's get it the right way around, consists of um, a jump ring on the one side going through the wrap loop, jump ring on the other side going through the wrap loop and then chain from one side and a Mobius ring and just simple one in one chain mail coming up the other side. Now, Mobius ring, I hear you say, uh, what's that? Well, that's just a very simple form of um, chain mail. And it is just linking our jump rings inside one another. Um, these are, from, I think these are about, probably about a seven mil jump ring. So I'm putting five in, uh, sorry, four in one. So I open my jump ring like so, right? literally opening a door and you close it exactly the same, going slightly past and then bringing it back. You get a nice clean fit, right? So your first jump rings needs to be uh, closed and then I've opened four more. So simply take the open one, pop it through from the top downwards and close it up and then push both jump rings together. 
Now, the critical thing about a Mobius ring is they all need to go the same way. So exactly the same journey through the centre and close up, push them back together again and then again through that centre, push back push them together so that you've got you can see that center it's a little bit uh, well it is it's a russian wedding ring design actually it's sort of infinite circles the last one through the center coming from the top through to the base and close up okay and then you have your pretty little um mobius ring these are really really lovely to use as chain work or as spacers um, i love them i find them incredibly useful Right, now, I'll put that to one side. Now, if you imagine this is completely finished, all bubbled up, etc., what I'm going to do is now I will take, put my jump ring, open, okay, and pop it in to that wrap loop. Okay, just close it for now. Now, what I've done here is the Mobius ring, right, that you can see there. Can you see what I've done? I've attached a jump ring here, linked it to that jump ring, sorry, that Mobius ring, and then another link here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the Mobius ring that I've just made, okay? The jump ring that I've just attached to the wrap loop on the pendant, I'm gonna open it, okay? And then I'm going through, the, again, exactly the same way that you did when you were forming the Mobius ring. Going in, pick it up, and close. Making sure you go just a little way past and then close. And then, letting gravity do the work for you. See how that, that Mobius ring is, is standing there? Now I'm going to just open up another jump ring and pop that through. In exactly the same way so I'm going to come in I'm going to, I'll come through the back this time so you can see linking all the way through so when I pull that you can see that formation of that that lovely infinity of um, that Mobius ring and then I'll close that up again now the next thing to do is it's entirely up to you whether how many other um, jump rings in length that you want I have got counting the two linking ones, so there's that one is linking to that, and then I've got this one. So I'm going to count that one as number one, and then I've linked together here another one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the seventh jump ring, as I've just showed you, links into that Mobius ring, and then another one to continue the chain. So basically all I have to do now is I can open either this jump ring or of course the jump ring that is on this length that I've just made. Attach, close up and then we have our chain starting. Okay, so you just continue that, bearing in mind how many jump rings that you're using all together, do the next, the next part of it exactly the same. Um, I think I used about four Mobius rings, counting the one down here um, on this side. Then the next thing to do is just to pop on another jump ring. This is now going to, this is awful at this table. Um, this is now going to, um, you're going to see why I did such a large wrap loop, because I need to put another jump ring through there. Close that up for now. And then when I have measured my length of chain mail right up to the uh, where i want the clasp roughly to be my i cut then my lengths of i think i had six lengths of chain which is going to be exactly let me show you exactly the same length as on uh, as the the, Mob the mobius ring chain so there's a mobius ring chain here's my six lengths they are both the same length okay and all I did then, because I don't like to have all this busyness going on around the class, but it just makes it difficult to do up when you're on your own, um, is I have just taken this last jump ring here and I have added a short length of chain, six or seven uh, links. 
um, attach that to a toggle. You can have any clasp you like. Exactly the same amount of um, links on the chain here. That chain is attached to the toggle of the um, of the clasp. And I have popped that chain onto this jump ring. Then all of the links of chain, no matter how many you do, you attach that to that jump ring as well. And then coming down to the pendant, we have got your jump ring that's attached to the bottom of your chain. We have the connecting jump ring here that comes out of the Mobius ring and then the other jump ring that is actually coming out of the wrapped loop. And that's it. It's um, it's simple. It really is simple. And I think you'll find that as you progress through, you won't really uh, have any problems whatsoever. So I hope you'll make something like this. As I say, it's quite pretty. Um, and uh, I love it. I love it. I love the shirt. Right. So um, good luck with that. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you again really soon. And thanks ever so much for watching. What? Washing? <laughs> yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching and stay safe. Bye bye.